Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Louisa. I'm in my third year of studying medicine at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you all about how I make money and have little side hustles. The cost of living has gone up this year, so finance is something a lot of us are worrying about. So I thought it'd be useful to tell you how I make income and support my degree alongside the actual studying. Let's get on with the video. So the first source of income I'm going to be talking to you about is photography. This is the biggest source of income for me during term. In terms of what I actually do, basically I do photos for my college and some other colleges as well, but it's all event photography. We have things at my college called BOPs, which run on average two to three times a term. They're little discos, they tend to last about four to five hours and I get paid £15 per hour, so I can earn anywhere in the range of £60 to £75 for doing that and get paid pretty quickly. It's all bank transfer, so it comes directly to me. All it entails is basically taking taking photos of people having a good time at BOPs, which are like our college discos. And outside of that, sometimes I do event photography for other colleges in Freshers Week. I did photography for Downing College at their Freshers Silent Disco. That was really fun. I've also done photography for some of the May Week events and like balls that we have at the end of every term, which are kind of like end of term celebrations. So there was the Fitzwilliam Spring Ball last year and I did the one o'clock in the morning to 4.30 in the morning shift. And that was really fun because I took the photo at the end of the, the end of the ball, which is like a big survivor's photo and everyone stands on the lawn. It was so fun. I got to go on Ferris wheel and sit at the top with my camera and take photos of people from the top. So it was really fun. And the thing is you get free entry to all the events that you're doing photography at. So there's lots of perks besides just the money as well. And it is really fun. I love taking photos of people having a good time. Photography is probably my favorite source of income, my favorite way to earn money outside of studying. And it's just a really good way to get into events for free. And yeah, I do earn the most from it. I only tend to do three or four events during term. And then at the end of the term, I might do the balls, which I might earn 90 pounds for that. So that's a bit better, but it's definitely how I earn the most money, a couple hundred pounds every term. Really good, really good source of income. So if you've got a camera and you know how to use it, you enjoy doing photography, and you don't mind taking photos of people and going up to them and being like, do you guys want a photo? If you're okay with doing that, then photography is probably one of the best ways you can earn money as a student. Okay, next we're gonna come on to something that's a bit less of a regular source of income for me, but something that I'm really passionate about is outreach events. And for those of you that have followed me throughout my journey on YouTube, you will know that all 18 years of my education up to this point, I've been in state comprehensive education. So outreach events are something that I'm really passionate about just because I know how much of a difference it makes to students in these kinds of schools. The college that I'm at, I'm at Trinity Hall. Our college does online and in-person outreach events. Sometimes I get given a £10 voucher. If I've just done one hour, the college gives a voucher. So that's either for Sainsbury's, Amazon or book voucher. I tend to use it for Sainsbury's so I can save money on buying food. If it's not a voucher, then we actually get paid real money. And that can either come off our college bill at the end of every term. So when we move into college each term, we get a bill for our rent. Uh, we get a rent reduction basically if we've worked a certain number of hours. But yeah, I tend to earn 10 to 50, 10 to 10 pound 50 an hour and the what kind of work is things like helping at open days giving tours to people that are looking at the college sometimes it's like online offer holder days on zoom and right now i'm actually earning quite a bit of money from doing the college interviews so i've been supervising interviews in like the waiting room for students before they go in and i've earned 10 pound 50 an hour for that and that will all be coming off my college bill next term so that's quite a good source of income as well and it is something i'm really passionate about so if you're keen to get involved in outreach events widening access to cambridge oxford medicine all of that stuff is really good i'm pretty sure every university has some kind of scheme so look into it the next one is my most regular source of income and that is tutoring it's actually something that originally i wasn't really considering just because i'd never had a tutor before coming here and you can work privately where you do it all on your own or you can work for a company they might pay you less than if you did it privately but they might offer like bursary schemes or free schemes for students who are from widening participation backgrounds on low incomes, free school meal students. They might be able to get tutoring for free with a company that then charges students who can afford it the full rate. So it doesn't affect how much you get paid. You will get paid the same regardless on who you're tutoring, but the actual company will charge less or more depending on who the student is that's applying for the tutoring. So it works out really fair and it work, like aligns with my morals. So I definitely recommend working for a company if you can, if you want to. The other perk of working for a company is that it is really regular. It's all really easy to organize. You don't have to wait for students to usually approach you. The company will find you a student and then set you up together. And it does feel a lot more organized. Sometimes they give you resources for free as well to use. So you don't have to like make the lesson, the lesson's already made, you just have to deliver it. 
and yeah it's just really good i really enjoy tutoring it's also really good if you want to get involved in teaching and you don't know where to start tutoring is a really good option i am considering teaching in my future alongside medicine so it's good to get a good foundation in tutoring first for private you can probably charge more so the thing with the company is they might charge 20 pound an hour for tutoring but they tend to only pay the tutors uh, 10 to 12 pound 50 an hour so i get paid 12 pound 50 for a levels 10 pound for interview prep and bmat prep ucat prep personal statement reading all that other stuff that's 10 pound an hour so it is less of a source of income than the other work i do but it is regular i do one hour a week and if i go private then i could charge 20 pound same as the company and all of that would go to me so that's the benefit of going private so that's tutoring and again it's really easy to fit around your studies really flexible if you just want to do one hour a week it's really easy to do that the next source of income for me is selling second hand i have depop and vinted and Vinted is really good because you get buy protection. So if you sell an item or if you buy an item, if anything happens to it in the process and it doesn't get sent within seven days, both you and the um, buyer can have some compensation or you'll get a free, full refund. So Vinted's good if you want like buy protection, side protection. Depop has seller protection and buy protection as well, but it's a bit more faffy to go about like claiming back and to get refunds than on Vinted. Vinted's all automatic when you get a refund, it's so quick and easy. So it's slightly more secure, but Depop has more items, more people use Depop. So if you want to sell, I think Depop's probably quicker to get sales, but Vinted is more secure. So it's just depending on what you're looking for. I actually tend to list items on both. Before I came back to uni, I put about, maybe 30 or more items on Depop. I sold about 15 of them in the first four weeks of term, then basically didn't sell anything. But in those four weeks, I made over hundred pounds. And I'm not even selling items for that much, but if you just make sure that you're selling them at a price that will attract buyers, you can make a lot of money very quickly. And it's really good because everyone has clothes they never wear. And it just means that I could downsize my wardrobe. I'm sick and tired of having loads of clothes. I just don't like having stuff and it takes up room. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna sell it and make some money. Why not? I really encourage you guys to go on Depop and Vinted um, to have a look at that. And also it's just so much better than buying and selling through fast fashion brands. Big brands, they don't need your money. They have it already, like it's fine. Obviously it helps workers in those companies get paid, but if you can buy shop small, shop secondhand, I really encourage you to do that. It's better for the planet, it's better for you and it's just better for everyone. So that's that one. The last way I make money or kind of have a source of income during term is through doing questionnaires. I do questionnaires for a company called The Opinion Panel. They send me a questionnaire, maybe two or three a week, sit down, fill them in, they take five to 10 minutes. They never collect any of my personal data. If they do, it's nothing more than my postcode. They never collect my name. Very rarely they collect my age. It's usually like an age bracket. And they ask me things about like, what do I think of adverts? I might have to watch a video, tell them what I think of a video or a radio ad. Sometimes it's things like how much time I spend on technology. It's like sort of generic information about people and society and how the world works. That's the kind of stuff they're looking at. And basically every time you fill one in, you get a certain number of points, you collect enough points and then you get a voucher. Also, every time you get a voucher, they then give you a thousand points again for free. So you only really need to collect 1,500 points. You're meant to collect 2,500, but you need 1,500 and then you get another voucher. The vouchers are worth 25 pound and you can spend them basically in any shop you like. They have a list online of all the shops. Uh, I'll link the website below because it is really handy and I really enjoy this source of income. Like it's fun and funny. Most people hate doing questionnaires, but I quite like it because I know that at the end of it, I'm going to get a reward. And you can use it uh, in most shops. I think supermarkets take it, maybe Sainsbury's does, Smith's might. You can use it in restaurants. Like it's really good and definitely a quick and easy source of income. The one thing I will say is it's quite irregular how frequently you get sent the questionnaires. It is about two or three a week, but some weeks you go like weeks with none. So I tend to only earn one voucher a term, maybe maybe one voucher every two terms and it's only 25 pounds, but it's better than nothing and it is quick and it is easy. So I do recommend looking at the opinion panel and like I say, I'll link it below. So those are the five ways I actually do earn money. What I don't earn money doing and something I wanna make clear is I don't earn money doing YouTube. I earn not a penny from doing YouTube. Other than free gifting of jewelry, I have earned nothing from YouTube. Some people do earn from YouTube. It just depends how many subscribers you have, how many watch hours you have. But unfortunately, I don't have the time during time to make content quickly enough or good enough like of a good enough quality to earn money from youtube so unless you do it's going to be quite hard to earn money from content creating that doesn't mean you can't try but i'm not doing it for money i'm purely doing this so i can help you guys show you what cambridge is like show you what my life is like and hopefully you guys can learn some stuff as well that you find useful for example hopefully this video has been useful i'm going to end it there guys but just a quick summary so there's five ways to earn money photography 
college outreach events and access events, tutoring, selling secondhand, and from doing questionnaires. I don't earn money from YouTube or content creation. So I hope you found that useful. I am gonna be doing a future video on how I save money as a student, so where I not earn money, but basically don't spend my money. And I'm gonna be speaking to my college class act officer, who's basically a student at the college who knows all there is to know about bursaries, finance, all of that stuff for students on low incomes or from state school, state comprehensive. So I will be doing a Q&A with them very soon. If you are watching this video and you've made it to the end, thank you for watching. I hope you find it useful. I hope that like money worries are something that no student should have to worry about. I know I've spent a lot of time this term, particularly with the cost of living going up, worrying about money and finance, but it's little things like this that have really helped me get through term. So hopefully they'll help you as well. But good luck and I will see you all again very soon. See you next time guys. Bye. Um, okay. I've forgotten. What was it?